Assalamualaikum. Uh, so today we're going to continue our lecture on chapter number two, which is sampling distribution. So before we go to sampling distribution, as a recap, right? So just to refresh your memory, uh, the definition of population. So the population consists of all members in the area of the study. Let's say, for example, let's say you want to study knowledge, attitude and practice on dengue fever prevention at Perak Tengah District. So, all residents at Perak Tengah District is the population. Right, so in real life, uh, calculating parameter of the population is almost impossible because uh, the population in nature is very large unless you are taking a small uh, area of the study. So let's say, uh, for example, uh, the topic that I give uh, just now, uh, knowledge, attitude and practice on dengue fever prevention at Perak Tengah District. So Perak Tengah District, uh, sure, you, it, it consists of uh, uh, many residents in Perak Tengah District, right? maybe 500,000, so it's very large. So to calculate the parameter uh, from the population, uh, is very uh, nearly impossible lah. That's why uh, in many statistical work, right, uh, we are employ we are taking a portion from a population. It means that we are taking sample, right? So either one sample, single sample, or many sample. So uh, for example, let's say um, I tujuh uh, example ni. Uh, let's say I have. Um, Perak Tengah District, right? So I have capital N equal to 500,000. 500,000 resident in Perak Tengah District. So I can take a single sample. This is sample number one. N1 equal to 10,000 people, right? So I can measure the uh, mean of the, the random variable that I want to study. So let's say I can take another one, S2, right? Sample number two. And 2 equal to 10,000. And then I measure uh, mean for random variable under study. Or I can take another one as 3 with N3 equal to 10,000. And I measure the uh, random mean of the random variable for a uh, variable of interest. So the the reason of we are taking a lot of sample and measure a lot of uh, sample statistic because we want to generalize back to the population. So when we want to infer back to the population, right? So that is the reason. So we, we do a sampling uh, distribution. So now let's look at the introduction, theorem for introduction. So if x1, x2 until xn constitute a random sample from a population with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square and this, this is basically uh, xi is having a normal distribution with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square. Lah. So then the expected of x bar, the expected of x bar mean the mean of the x bar uh, should be equal to the true, po true mean. Right. True mean means the population mean, right? So, you need theorem introduction, lah, and then we will uh, try to prove this theorem later on. Lah. So, back to the example I gave just now. So, by taking the mean of the mean, mean of the all sample, right? Mean of all sample should equal to the true mean, which is the population mean. This is based on theorem, uh, introduction theorem. Lah. So, another one, it says that the variance of the population, uh, the, the uh, variance of x bar, it should be equal to sigma squared divided by n. Right? And where x bar is equal to uh, summation of x divided by n. See, this is the form, normal formula we know already. So let's try to prove uh, theorem introduction. So to prove, uh, we know that uh, expected of x bar equal to mu. This is the claim by the, this theorem. Lah. The theorem claim that 
expected of x bar is equal to mu and variance of x bar is equal to sigma squared over n, right? And we know that x bar is equal to summation of x i divided by n where i equal to 1 until n. So, to find the expected of x bar is equal to expected of summation of x i divided by n. So, this one should be uh, 1 over n expected of x1 plus x2 plus until xn, right? So, we know from a normal population, right, xi is having a normal population, mu equal, uh, mean equal to mu and sig variance equal to sigma square. So, this one should be 1 over n, right, and, and mu, right. So, this one mu, mu, mu plus mu plus mu until n mu is equal to n mu, lah. right. So, this one should be equal to mu, right. So, we prove the first part of the theorem introduction. Now, let's look at the variance of x bar should be equal to the variance of uh, summation of x i divided by n. So, we take out the constant should be 1 over n square and variance is a sigma square. So, summation of uh, sigma square to the, towards n should be n sigma square. So, this one should be sigma square over n. So, we already proved theorem introduction. So, we can say that uh, x bar, oops, x bar would having a normal distribution with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square over n. Right? So, when you are taking a lot of sample in under one population, so the mean is equal to mu. Right, equal to three mu, a uh, true mu, a uh, true mean, and the variance should be equal to sigma over n. Right. So um, let's look at the definition number one. So definition number one would explain the theorem introduction as well. Lah. So the get the sini sample distribution, sampling distribution of statistics is a tool to tell us how close the statistic to the parameter. Right. So, it means that uh, sometimes, let's say, um, I think they think of example in the real example. So, I just explain. Sometimes we don't know. We Usually, we don't know the population mean. Lah, huh? If the uh, sample size, is uh, if the total sam population sample size is very large. Uh, let's say we take a very small uh, population size. Let's say, N, capital N equal to 10. 10k so we take uh, sample 1 sample 2 sample 3 and sample 4 so as 4 so let's say that we measure the true mean should be equal to 33.4 right so when you take the first sample you measure the first mean of the sample uh, you should not get the actual mean, right? You should get the sample mean. Maybe you got 35.2 and this one maybe you got 32.5 and maybe this one you got uh, 34.1 and then maybe this one 4 should be maybe 30, 30, 33.8 for example. So, this is just an example, eh? maybe not true. So, but actually, when uh, kita, we will discuss more thoroughly in chapter number three for this uh, example, okay? Uh, basically, when you add, we will find the average of the average, right? Average of the sample size, uh, sample, uh, sample. Uh, you will get the, you will uh, the 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 mean of the average should lead to the true population lah. at least you will get some range close to the true population so this is the objective nanti kita akan tengok this one uh, the, uh, the estimation part lah, chapter number 3 right uh, the probability distribution for all possible value of all statistic result when 
uh, random sample of size n are repeatedly drawn from the population right benda yang sama je cuba cerita tadi so dekat sini uh, consider wait ah uh. alright let's continue um Right, uh, consider a normal population with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma, right? So, this is a part, eh? So, assume we repeatedly take sample at a given size from this population and calculate the arithmetic mean of each sample, right? I mean, this is, a, this is sample mean. So, each sample has its own average value and the distribution of the average is called sampling distribution. Right? So, actually, benda yang sama dia akan, uh, yang saya cerita tadi. So, bila kita ambil uh, the mean of each mean, right? x1, x bar 1, x bar 2, x bar 3, x bar 4, divided by 4, it should lead to the true mean uh, as stated by uh, theorem introduction. So, we already proved this equal to mu, right? So, benda yang sama. So, let's look at the definition, another definition. There are two type of sample. First, uh, we need to know this equation. X bar should be equal to summation of Xi divided by N. Another one is S square equal to, means this is a sample variance, summation of x i minus x bar square divided by n minus 1 or this one should be also equal to x square minus summation of x and then you square divided by n n minus 1 right so you can prove this one to this one right so now let's look at a uh, intro uh, example for introduction right okay so this one just want to prove that uh, our theorem is correct right even though we already proved, we try, we try to prove by using the example, right? So, a, a die is thrown infinitely, many times. So, let x represent the number of spots uh, showing on any throw. Then, find the probability distribution of x. So, to find the probability distribution of x is very simple. So, we know that a die consists of 6 output, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, this is the probability of x, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, right? So, each uh, outcome, right, each value, each event has the same probability value, which is 1 over 6, 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 and 1 over 6, right? We know this, right? Because this is very basic. Eh? We already looked this in the fundamental of probability, right? Um, and then we try to find expected of x. Expected of x should be equal to the summation of xi multiplied with probability of xi, where i equal to 1 until 6. So this one should be 1 multiplied 1 over 6 plus 2, 1 over 6, right? I think you already know this one. So, 6, 1 over 6. So, can you calculate for me? What is the answer? I was expected of x. This one should be equal to 3.5, right? So, uh, variance of x should be expected of x square minus expected of x and then u square. So, we need to find the expected of x. Expected of x square, sorry, uh, expected of x square should be summation of x square multiplied with probability of x. This is i, i, 6, i equal to 1. Right, so this one should be 1 power of 2, 1 over 6 plus 2 power of 2, 1 over 6, plus until 6 power of 2, 1 over 6. So, this one should be equal to how much? Can you calculate for me? How much? 
Alia Maisara. What is the answer? What is the answer? Sampai dapat, can you voice out? Expected of x square. Nur Aida Amira. Hey. Yes. 15 points 167 all right uh, 17 lah huh? 17 all right so this is uh, expected of x square so to find the variance of x uh, we just 15.17 minus 3.5 and then square so this one should be 2.9 uh, 2.92 right okay so this is for a single variable, right? For a single variable. So just for x, right? So now let's look at example number two. Example number two says that when you... Uh, suppose we want to estimate mu from the mean x bar at a sample size n equal to 2. So it means that we, we, we have two dice, right? We have two dice and we want to know what is a... Uh, what is the distribution of x bar so to find the distribution of x bar means that we we need to draw a graph uh, a table juga lah macam ni right we want to draw a table like this but now we have n equal to 2 so when we have n equal to 2 so we're going to have row n column lah. this is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 this is 1 2 3, 4, 5, and 6. And we make a table. I just you make a nice table. Huh? Right. Okay. So by by right we, we by by the counting rule we know that how many outcome we we, we expect. How many outcome will be there? How many outcome there? So, mana lagi? 36, right? How do you get 36? 6 multiplied by 6, right? By counting rule, basic rule of counting. So, let's draw, let's put all the outcome, possible outcome. This is 1 and 1, 1 and 2, 1 and 3. 1 and 4, 1 and 5, 1 and 6. This is 2, 1. You can do it by yourself. We just want to list down all the possible outcome. Right? Because we want to calculate mean. Because the, the question asks us what is the distribution of x bar.
So, after you list down all the possible outcome, then you need to find the average for each uh, value, right? For each cell, you need to find the average. So, how to find the average? Add two value divided by two, right? So, one plus one divided by two is equal to one. This is 1.5. 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5. This is 1.5, 2, 2.5. Just follow the pattern lah. Ha? Sama aja pattern dia. Uh, so 3.54. This is 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5. Alright. This is 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4. 4.5 and 5. This is 3, 3.5 and 5, 5 and 5.5. And this is 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5 5 and 6. Right? So all together are 36, right? So this is not a probability distribution yet, right? So we need to summarize it into a probability distribution table right so we're going to have uh, x and fx right so you can have me ruler eh? so, guys i tak ada ruler dekat sini oops Right, so this is going to be 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 4.5, 5, 5.5, 5 and last one is 6. Remember, the total outcome is 36, right? So 1, we only have 1, right? So this one should be 1 over 36 and 1.5 we will have we have 2 right 1.5 we have 2 should be 2 over 36 and this one we have 3 over 36 4 over 36 5 over 36 and the last one is 3.5 1 2 3 4, 5, 6. So this is 6 over 36. And the, uh, the trend is declining back. Lah. So this is 5 over 36, 4, 36, 3, 36, 2, 36, and 1, 36. And the total should be equal to 1. Right? So by, by theorem, we know that uh, the expected of x bar should be equal to mu which is equal to 3.5 so you can do a calculation here you should get 3.5 and then uh, this is your your task huh? you do eh? uh, kalau I buat nanti tak sempat nak habis right x bar a uh, variance of uh, variance of x bar it should be sigma squared over n should be 2.92 over 2 so be equal to 1 point 1 point berapa 1.46 2.92 divided by 2 1.46 so your task is calculate the expected value of x bar this is x bar this is x bar sorry again x bar uh, and then you should get 3.5 and calculate the variant of x bar okay Alright, so now let's look into the real sampling distribution. Right, so now theorem number one. Theorem number one says that uh, basically theorem this theorem number one is a uh, is same as introduction theorem. Right, so we already approved this one. Right, the the variance of uh, sampling distribution should be sigma squared over n, right? We already know this. Now, let's look at example number one. <clears throat> In 
In example number one, a bottling machine can regulate it, uh, regulate uh, so that it discharge an average of mu ounce per bottle. It has observed, it has been observed that the amount of the fill dispensed by the machine is normally distributed with variance uh, standard deviation equal to one. So this is a population standard deviation. And the sample size n equal to nine fill bottle is randomly selected from the output of the machine on a given day. Right, so the catastrophe find the probability that the sample mean will be within 0 0.3 ounce of the true mean mu. So, apa yang dia bagi dekat sini? They give us the value, the sigma squared, uh, sorry, they, they give us sigma equal to 1 and we know that sigma squared is also equal to 1 and equal to 9, right? And they ask us to find probability of uh, uh, sample mean uh, within 0 0.3 and the true mean. So y bar minus mu less than or equal to 0 0.3 means that we want to find within 0 0.3 means uh, probability of negative 0 0.3 right? y bar minus mu oops, and 0 0.3 right. And we know uh, from this is y bar because the sample mean we are talking about sample mean okay right um, so we know that uh, the z distribution right if x is having a normal distribution with mean equal to zero and variance equal to one so it can be translated to z score eh? z score is equal to x uh, x minus mu divided by sigma right so when x bar is having mu and sigma squared over n so the z score should be equal to x bar minus mu divided by square root uh, sigma over square root of n right benda yang sama lah sini dia square root kan sigma tu kita square root kan sigma tu dia dapat benda ni lah so this is the the, the z distribution formula so now by looking at this one and this one right so we have the nominator right to translate it to z distribution so we just need to add probability of negative 0 0.3 divided by sigma over square root of n right so when you divide by sigma over square root of n it becomes z distribution already right so this one is also same divided by sigma over square root of n so we know that sigma is equal to 1 based on this example right so it become um, 1 over square root of n 1 over square root of n right so it should be equal to probability of square root of n uh, negative 0 0.3 right? z uh, square root of n 0 0.3 and n is equal to 9 n equal to 9 9 square root of 9 should be equal to 3 multiply 0 0.3 should be equal to negative 0 0.9 z 0 0.9 so this is the area that we want to find lah. right um, negative 0 0.9 0 0.9 right so we want to find the the area the, the probability of the shaded area there. and what is the alpha right so um, by looking at a statistical table Table number, table number three, right? Table number three, zero point nine should be one point, zero point one four one, right? So it should be equal to one minus two probability of z less than. So no, no, not less than. It should be more than 
more than 0 0.9 right it should be equal to 1 minus 2 0 0.18 uh, 1 8 1 8 0 uh, 1 8 4 4 1 1 8 4 1 Right, so this one should be equal to 0 0.6318. Right, <coughs> sudah. Ya, yeah, because uh, kita uh, dalam table, statistical table, we only have the value on the right hand side, kan? Right? And then, uh, uh, you, you should know the characteristic of normal distribution, kan? Characteristic of normal distribution, whatever on the right hand side is also same on the left hand side. This is the divider, mean equal to zero. Right? So, we want to find the area on the right hand side is also equal to the right hand side so kita nak cari kat sini 1 minus double of this should be the middle the middle area lah betul right, this is the fastest way lah if you don't know you can you can always find uh, this value probability of z more than 0 0.9 right uh, this is this value probability of z less than negative 0 0.9 so 1 minus all this value lah benda yang sama kan right right uh, kita buat example number 2 and kita uh, so refer to example number 1 example number 1 uh we know from example number one, uh, sigma equal to one, n equal to nine, right? Betul? n equal to nine. Um, how many observations should be included if the sample size is a sample? Sorry. Uh, how many observations should be included in the sample if we wish y bar be within 0 0.3? And of the ounce, uh, ounce of the mu with the probability 0 0.9 means that probability of uh, y bar minus mu this is uh, within 0 0.3 yeah? and should be equal to 0 0.95 instead of 0 0.63 0 0.63 kita ambil n equal to 9 so we want it to be 0 0.95 very simple we just remember z equal to x bar minus mu divided by sigma over oh sorry this is not sigma squared sigma over square root of n so we expand this probability of negative 0 0.3 y bar minus mu 0 0.3 equal to 0 0.95 right we want to convert this we just impose sigma over square root of n so this one should be uh, negative 0 0.3 over sigma over square root of n this is z already negative sorry this is uh, 0 0.3 sigma over square root of n 0 0.95 and we know that sigma is equal to 1 right from example number 1 sigma is equal to 1 so it should be like this right? macam contoh example yang sama juga macam tadi uh, sigma as square root of n negative 0 0.3 this is not uh, minus eh? this is uh, multiply uh, 0 0.3 square root of n equal to 0 0.95 so let's draw the the, the curve right so we can understand so if you start at anything just draw the curve so this is the area no this is not the area tak cantik lah lukis sekejap ya, boleh cantik sikit 
Still tak cantik tapi tak apalah. Uh, this is negative 0.3 square root of n. This is 0.3 square root of n. This is the area that we want to find. This area, we already find the area lah. This is 0.95. Right? We already know this area. This is 0.95. And this area on the right is 0.0. .0 25 and this area on the left is 0.025 right by looking at the statistical table right uh, you look at table number four so the area on the right hand side is alpha so since they uh, dalam table uh, statistic ni they batch up table area on the right hand side kan yeah? So, we need to find 0.025, it should be 1.96. So, the whole thing here is 1.96. And the whole thing here is negative 1.96. Right? So, square root of uh, negative n. So, mana-mana lah kita nak ambil 0 0.3. So, I, I... Negative 0 0.3 square root of n equal to 1.96. So, negative 1.96, eh? right? Negative. So, square root of n should be negative 1.96 divided by negative 0 0.3. Should be equal to negative 1.96 divided by 0 0.3. Negative 0 0.3 should be 6.53. 6.53 right and n should be equal to 6.53 square this square this one should be equal to 42.68 and the sample size will be 43 okay that's <coughs> Any question so far? Theorem number two, right? Um, theorem number two says that let x1 until xn be defined as in theorem number one, right? They get that. Uh, let x1 until xn be defined as theorem number one means that theorem number one says that x1, x, uh, i equal to n is having a normal distribution with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square right so this is a definition from theorem number one lah. right so we can recheck again so theorem number one says that x is having a normal distribution with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square okay so now then they get to the destiny if z is equal to xi minus mu squared divided by sigma our independent standard normal uh, random variable where summation of x and uh, zi should be equal to summation of xi minus mu squared divided by sigma has a chi squared distribution with n degree of freedom right um no, actually, you need to change something. I think it's, uh, you punya uh, uh, workbook sama uh, definition. Sama definition, sama formula. Formula yang sama. Can you respond? Right. Uh, I think what the theorem number two want to say, want to try to say is, uh, when we square you remember uh, if a standard normal distribution z equal to x minus mu divided by sigma right this is a standard normal when x is having a standard normal distribution so uh dekat sini z dekat sini z i is a square of the standard normal means that uh, x i minus mu divided by sigma and then you square so this is the formula right and then uh, sama juga dekat sini should be square the whole thing right so 
definition of z here should be z i equal to x i minus mu divided by sigma and then we square means that we want to square the uh, the standard normal distribution so when we square the standard normal distribution we will get a chi squared with one degree of freedom All right so this is extension of theorem number two eh? can you please uh, take down the notes so when we have a summation of z i it should be it should leads to a chi squared with n degree of freedom Okay, so this is the uh, explanation of theorem number two. Right, again, uh, I will ulang balik. Where well, like x1 until xn having a normal distribution with mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square. Then um, z is having a standard normal distribution. Uh, x minus mu is a standard normal distribution. So when you have z i, this is a maybe I took a tak pakai z pun tak apa. This one kita pakai apa pun huruf lah w lah suka hati kita lah kan w. I tak mau bagi sama dengan atas ni ya. Atas ni we understand the z score kan. Z score is from standard normal distribution right. So I just change this one to w lah right. So suka hati kita lah nak pakai simbol apa kan. As long as we understand, uh, because W is equal to uh, standard normal distribution multiply uh, power of two, right? So when normal standard normal distribution power of two is equal to chi squared with one degree of freedom. Basically, we already uh, we have already proved this uh, formula in previous chapter example number thirty four. If you still remember. Right, so if you think about the question, they get when we take the summation of w right until n, which is equal to, it should be equal to summation of i equal to one until n, and x i minus mu divided by sigma, and then square. So it should equal to chi squared with n degree of freedom. Now, kita kena tengok kenapa dia jadi macam ni. So, proof of theorem number 2. So, proof of theorem number 2, we already did uh, on last uh, chapter, example number 30, 34. Remember, I told you, this one is going to be the proving for as, uh, chapter number 2. So, benda yang sama, X is having a standard normal distribution and we W is equal to x square means that we square the standard normal distribution so we take the mgf and we found out the the random variable w is the mgf for random variable w is 1 minus 2t power of negative 1 negative half this is equal to chi squared with 1 degree of freedom right so that's why i said i told you uh, for Z i so means W i W i is equal to uh, chi squared with one degree of freedom, right? So now let's take uh, we know that um, let's say we know that m w square t so w is equal to um, Uh, confused lah dia punya ni. Uh, w square is uh, standard normal square lah. Right? Okay. We understand this. So, it's equal to 1 minus 2t negative 1 over 2 is having a chi squared with 1 degree of freedom. Right? Kita dah proof dalam example number 34. Uh, you can check the proving ya. Eh? So, I tak ulang balik proving dia. So now I want to prove that uh, let let w let y lah let y equal to summation of w i squared right w i squared i equal to one until n. So m y t 
right, Mohammed generating function for y respect to t is equal to for, uh, remember last chapter kita dah tengok kalau summation we take a product of uh, the MGF right 1 minus 2t negative 1 over 2 so this one should be equal to 1 minus 2t negative 1 over 2 multiply 1 minus 2t negative 1 over 2 until the end right negative 1 over 2 so this one should be 1 minus 2t negative n over 2 so compared to the gamma distribution 1 minus beta negative alpha when uh, beta equal to 2 alpha equal to v over 2 v is the degree of freedom eh? v is degree of freedom right so you can say that y is having a chi squared with n degree of freedom. So y is equal to summation of wi squared. Right? We are we are trying to prove is uh, theorem number two. Okay. Any questions so far? No question, then we move to example number three. Sudah? We move to example number three. So, example number three says that Z1 until Z6 denote a random sample from the standard normal distribution. So, we know that Zi is having a standard normal distribution, right? Where I equal to one until six. So we want to find b such that z square, z i square. So we know that z, uh, z square is having a chi squared with one degree of freedom. Right? When we apply the summation, it should be summation to the n. Lah. So, so since the summation until n equal to 6, so we know that uh, it's going to have a chi squared with 6 degree of freedom. Right? So the chi square distribution, let's draw the chi square distribution. So less than b, b over here, this is the area of 0 0.96, 0 0.96 and 95. Right. Mm. 0 0.95 and this is 0 0.05. Right. To find b, we know that this is a chi squared with six degree of freedom, right? Um, and then now we look at a statistical table. Statistical table. Uh, we try to find a chi squared distribution. Chi squared distribution. This is a table number six. Uh, table number eight, right? So table number eight. Now look at the instruction. Look at the instruction, the uh, table chi squared alpha and degree of freedom. Alpha and degree of freedom. The 100 alpha percent point of chi squared distribution for V degree of freedom. So this is a degree of freedom. This is your alpha, right? And then look at the, the shaded area. The shaded area is on the right hand side, right? So dia bagi alpha on the right hand side. So this is the value of uh, critical value. Okay? So now, since they give us on the right hand side, so we can only find area on the right hand side. Right, right hand side. But the critical B is still the same value, right? Which is alpha zero point uh, alpha six degree of freedom, zero point zero five lah. So, we're going to it on the right hand side. So, 0 0.05 uh, should be... Where is 0 0.05? Mana 0 0.05? Tak ada. Hmm. 
Maybe dekat sini sekejap eh. This is Oh dia tang hujung ni. I, I, terlindung okey, terlindung. 0.05 this one. So uh, the chi squared degree of freedom is 6. So 6 is here 12. Point, uh, 592 12.592 so is equal to 12.592 is it can you double confirm with me 12.592 yes so b is equal to 12.592 lah very simple lah. just uh, want to teach you how to use the vertical table okay Mule, are you okay? If you're okay, then we move to example uh, theorem number three. So theorem number three says that um, uh, x one until x n be a random sample from a normal distribution, right? With mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square. So x i having a normal distribution mean equal to mu and variance equal to sigma square and it go, it give us a new formula here they get the casini n minus one sample uh, variance divided by sigma population variance is also equal to summation of x i minus x bar squared divided by sigma squared so this is having a chi squared with n minus one degree of freedom, and we know that x bar and s square are independent random variable. Uh, this is a theorem number three. It says that when n minus one multiplied with the samples uh, variance divided by population variance is having a chi squared with n minus one degree of freedom. Right. So this is based on example number a uh, theorem number three. So let's like, look at theorem example number four. So in example number four, it says that refer to example number one. So example number one says that in a bottling machine, can we have a sigma equal to one, atau sigma square equal to one, n equal to nine. Right? Remember example number one. So Suppose that we plan to select a random sample of 10 bottles. This is a new N, right? So new N and measure the amount of fills for each bottle. Right? Um, if these 10 observations are used to calculate standard, uh, standard variance of sample, it might be useful to specify the interval as the value will induce include sample variance with a high probability 0.9. So we want to find B1 and B2 lah. So based on theorem number 3, N minus 1 sample variance divided by square, uh, sigma square is having a chi squared with N minus 1. So the reason why we use this because they are measuring based on the sample variance. right? So sample variance, the only way the only simple uh, variance dalam formula adalah chi squared min minus 1. So, same method lah. Macam tadi kita buat kan. So, to make it same. So, n minus 1. B1 divided by sigma squared. Nah, this is a chi squared n minus 1. Sama juga n minus 1. B2 sigma squared. This one is equal to 0 0.90. And we know that n is equal to 10, right? And sigma squared equal to 1 based on the first example. So this one should be uh, P9B, right? Chi squared with 9 minus 1 equal to 8. Eh, sorry, 10 minus 1 equal to 9. Eh? 9 degree of freedom, right? And then uh, this is going to be 9. This is B1, 9B2 equal to 0 0.90 right so let's draw the pop, uh, distribution curve right the, the chi squared should be on skew to the right distribution so this is the area that we want to find let's assume 
both area on the right and left are equal. So this is a B1, 9B1, 9B2. Right? So if this area is 0 0.90, this area, kita assume equal 0 0.05, 0 0.05. Zero point zero five to the right, zero point zero five to the left. Okay, so for nine B one. For 9B1, the area that we cover, so let's let, look at 9B2 first lah. So, I tak make it messy dalam graph I. 9B2, 9B2 will cover only 0 0.05 area to the right, right? So, this is, this is um, a chi-squared with 9 degree of freedom. And alpha 0 0.05 right chi squared with 9 degree of freedom alpha 0 0.05 should be equal to 0 0.059 point nine one nine. so 16.919 so we can find beta b2 is equal to 16.919 divided by 9 should be equal to how much you kira lah. And for B2, B1, 9B1. 9B1, we, the area to the right that we cover is 95%. So, the, this is the area to the right. Right? The whole thing. Right? The whole thing is area to the right. So, this is going to be uh, chi squared with 9 degree of freedom and alpha 0 0.95. Right, so, this one should be chi squared 9 0 0.95. So, this one should be uh, 95 should be here 9 3.325. Three point three two five. So we know that B one it should be three point three point three two five divided by nine. Right? You okay, write this one should be equal to zero point three six nine. I think. And this one one point eight eight zero. Okay, just want to show you how to apply the theorem number 3, right? So, now, let's look. Okay, sudah. We, we're going to put, uh, go to the last part, which is proving for theorem number 3. Small, okay? Any question? So, if you don't have question, then let's look at proving for theorem number 3. So, for theorem number 3, it gives us some information. Right? Um, let's utilize theorem number 3 and theorem number 1 and the theorem number 2 as well. Right? Uh, so, we know that, uh, we know, we know from the previous uh, knowledge, S square is equal to summation of x i minus x bar square divided by uh, n minus one. So this is uh, the the formula okay, for uh, variance, sample variance. Remember, in fundamental law of statistics, we have learned this. This is also equal to summation of x square minus summation of x and then you square divide by uh, n here and everything n one n minus one and this is n but more at that's right so 
yeah this is the formula for sample variance right and then uh, if you try to expand let's say we try to expand this uh, factor so let's say it should be equal to the uh, summation the color x i squared minus x i x bar plus x bar square right it should be divided by n minus 1 so this is the prior knowledge yeah right? we save this knowledge for later usage <coughs> okay we save this knowledge for later usage and then um, let's say uh, we work out from theorem number two and then kita tengok pula, uh, work out from theorem number three so theorem number three says that n minus one s square divided by sigma square is equal to summation of x i minus x bar square divided by sigma square right is having a chi squared with n minus one degree of freedom. Okay, so we have this information. We try to prove this information, and we're not definitely we're not going to use the 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 statement from theorem number three. This is theorem three. So let's look at theorem. 2. Theorem 2 says that uh, xi minus mu divided by sigma and then squared is having a chi squared with 1 degree of n degree of freedom. Right? Boleh faham? Eh? So, the summation, right? Kalau dia kata kat sini, theorem number 2, uh, dia ada 2 parts, right? 2 parts. Right, uh, so x i minus mu divided by sigma, and then you square, so it's having a chi squared with one degree of freedom. Another part is summation of, uh, oops, right, uh, x i minus mu divided by sigma, and then you square. Uh, this is a summation, a big summation here is having a chi squared with n degree of freedom. So we're going to base on these two value, right? Okay. So let's start with the this one. Sebab apa? Sebab uh, the sample variance, right? Is having x i minus x bar. So let's working with this one. So now, summation of um, x i minus mu squared divided by sigma squared. Benda yang sama, eh? Benda yang sama. And this one, and this one sama. Right, I just masukkan square dalam tu. Right? <coughs> so, since kita tengok dalam uh, sample variance ni, we have this variable this uh, constant uh, x bar so why not we try to impose x bar in this equation so it should be equal to x i minus mu plus x bar minus x bar square divided by sigma square sama kan ada penambahan kan ada kan right this one mati kan dia akan balik asal kan right so, since kita nampak dekat sini, xi dekat the, the sample variance, formula for sample variance, xi minus x bar. So, kita cuba rapatkan dia. Ah, this one, sorry. <coughs> so, this one should be a uh, big bracket here. xi minus x bar plus x bar minus mu. Right? And then we square divided by sigma square right benda yang sama right from here to here and we know that from here 
right the the right uh, the red color here the red uh, rectangle is equal to chi squared with n degree of freedom we know that right so we try to expand from here so now um is that a kacau this one so okay i turn bawah sini eh so kat bawah ni right so i try to expand this factor so it should be equal to summation of right i letak kat luar xi minus x bar square minus xi minus x bar multiply with x bar minus mu plus x bar minus mu square divided by square sigma square right so nampak serabut sangat bila sekali let's say kita asing-asingkan dia so i try nak asingkan dia so macam mana nak asingkan dia summation of the first part eh? uh, xi minus x bar square divided by sigma square minus uh, we put we put the constant in front x bar minus mu summation of xi minus x bar divided by sigma square and we put this one should be summation as well x, uh, x bar minus mu square divided by sigma square okay and remember uh, to bring this original equation to to the picture so this one should be summation of xi minus mu square divided by sigma square so we can see the whole picture right um So this is the problem, okay? This is the problem. We don't know. This is what what is the distribution for? Uh, what is this distribution? We don't know, right? But basically, this distribution are look like the sample variance, guys. Okay? okay? Okay. So this distribution also we don't know. And this is the solution we know. This is a chi squared with n degree of freedom. And this is the solution. This is the solution sama dengan apa? Ah, nanti kita tengok lah. Ah, kita, kita try deh. This one pun also don't know. Right? Kita tak nampak lagi dia berbentuk kan? Okay, kita biar dulu. Ya. Nanti kita tak nampak, kita biar dulu. So, kita tengok yang this one. The second one lah. Ataupun kita start daripada hujung lah. Kita start daripada hujung, okay. Uh, start daripada hujung. Uh, letak kat bawah ni, eh. So, summation of xi minus mu square divided by sigma square. So, I start daripada hujung ni, eh. Uh, summation of uh, x bar minus mu. So, since this is a constant, so n x bar minus mu square divided by sigma square is also equal to x bar minus mu square divided by sigma square over n right Okay, so let's say I take out the the square dekat luar. So it should be x bar minus mu divided by sigma over square root of n and then I square. So this one is theorem number one. Chi squared with one degree of freedom. Right? So by ini adalah bentuk Z. Remember, Z is equal for sampling distribution. I have to look at this, kan? Mana uh, tak? The first one. Oops. Right, nampak tak? Right. 
this is a z x bar minus mu z by y sigma over square root of n is having a normal standard normal distribution so when standard normal distribution is square by a square it should be equal to chi squared with one degree of freedom theorem number two right so we know that this is a chi squared with one degree of freedom right so let work out this one so the kind of ni adalah constant so we tetap kacau constant kita tetap kacau constant lah kita tengok variable summation of xi so we know from a prior knowledge kita letak dulu notes kat sini notes this is note from prior knowledge x bar is equal to summation of x divided by n right so summation of x should be equal to n x bar right so kita expand this one uh, so x bar minus mu and then this one should be summation of xi minus summation of x bar okay boleh so summation of x bar is equal to n x bar summation of uh, summation of x is equal to n x bar summation of x bar is equal to x n x bar so n x bar minus n x bar is equal to zero so this whole thing is equal to zero so zero plus this is the form the thing that we want to find x i minus x bar square divided by square root of uh, sigma square so this is a chi squared with n degree of freedom right uh, so let's say this is a w equal to chi squared with n plus chi squared with 1 so we use uh, mgf right so let's say this is a 1 minus 2t negative n over 2 equal to w plus 1 minus 2t negative 1 over 2 so you know about some lady baggy lah right so dia can jadi w should be equal to 1 minus 2t negative n minus 1 over 2 so this one is having a chi squared with n minus 1 degree of freedom okay So if you are putting into a uh, MGF, it should be not equal to plus lah. It should be multiply again. Uh, so uh, remember the rule of um, moment generating function y equal to x1 plus x2. It should be myt equal to mx1t multiply with mx2t. Right? This is the 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 what we call the theorem, eh? the rule, eh? the law of a moment generating function. So I just apply this one, right? So this is a random number, a random variable, right? So plus become multiply. Okay? Any questions so far? Do you have any question? If you don't have any question, then I give you a, uh, I give you a homework. 
this is uh, proving based on theorem number two, right? What I show it to you is proving from base based on theorem number two. So your task is your task is try to prove from n minus one s squared divided by sigma squared. And I give you a hint. Uh, hint apa nak bagi ya? Hint is um, summation of x i minus mu squared. Equal to sigma squared. It's not equal to sigma squared. Right. Um, I'll give you another hint. Lah, huh? mm. Remember S squared equal to summation of X i minus X X bar squared divided by N minus 1. This is your hint. Okay. Boleh eh? Okay, that's all right. Any questions so far? Yeah. yeah. Uh, proof lah. Proof yang ini adalah at chi square n minus 1. Boleh? Ni try lah uh, this one. Should be very easy lah. Uh, and then ini nampak panjang. Yang ini sepatutnya lagi pendek lah. Okay. So uh, I think if you don't have any uh, question. So I think we stop here. Next class we will continue on tier number 4, 5, 6 and 7. Right. Before 7, uh, lepas 7. Uh, kita masuk central limit theorem 8, 9 and last one is 10 I think uh, this is approximation uh, 10 ok so next class is going to be 4, 6, 7 4, 5, 6, 7 right ok I think that's all thank you very much Assalamualaikum